Economics is the study of the real world, and this year's Nobel Prize in Economics recognized the efforts to change behaviors to influence that. The Royal Swedish Academy of Science, to give it its proper title, awarded the Nobel jointly to David Card for his work on developing natural experiments, and to Joshua Angrist and Guido Imben for their work on analyzing causal relationships. Professor Card found out about the Nobel Prize. Uh, he was still up and about. It was in the middle of the night or very early in the morning, and he was wearing his pajamas. And the Nobel Prize uh, was treated a photo taken by Professor Card's wife. The Royal Academy, Swedish Academy, said he won his work for which, in their words, analyzed the labor market effects of minimum wage, immigration, education, and challenged conventional wisdom, leading to new analysis and additional insights. The Nobel Prize winning economist David Card. Congratulations, Professor. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a moment, isn't it, when they, they ring you up. Did you have any idea that you might be up for it this year? Uh, no, no, I didn't. I actually thought a, an old friend of mine was pay, playing a prank. Really? What, you didn't believe yeah. it initially? <laughs> Well, you know, Lars from Sweden. I mean, what, what am I supposed to believe? <laughs> <laughs> Lars from Sweden, and you've won the Nobel and the checks in the mail. All right, let's talk about the work you've done. It's really, it's, I mean, this isn't the highfalutin stuff that you've been working on. It is real world economics of immigration and minimum wage and those sorts of things that are political hot potatoes. For instance, let's talk minimum wage. Uh, I want you to listen to Senator Thune and settle this issue once and for all of the effect on minimum wage on business. Here's the senator. So two of my brothers worked at filling stations. My sister waited tables. My other brother worked at our big local attraction, which was the Pioneer Auto Show. And as I said, I, I cooked at the Star Family Restaurant. All of those businesses, all of those businesses work with very narrow margins. And if you take a $15 minimum wage, and I will tell you right now in South Dakota, the minimum wage, and our state sets it, which is frankly where I think it should be done, our state has a $9.45 $9 minimum wage. What you're essentially telling those businesses in South Dakota that I just mentioned, that you're gonna increase the amount of money that they have to pay their workers by over 50%, 50% increase in the wages that they would pay. Well, what does that do? Um, obviously, it puts a lot of them out of business, but it also raises the cost of everything else. That's got to get passed on. So, Professor, once and for all, does the minimum wage, does raising the minimum wage cost jobs? Um, in the study that I did, which was 30 years ago and uh, looked at a substantially smaller increase. It was an increase from $4.25 to $5.05, so um, only a, a just under 30% increase. In that particular case, there was uh, no effect on employment. Subsequent studies that have been done by other researchers um, looking at a wide variety of um, uh, minimum wage increases in the U.S., uh, and some in other countries, like the imposition of a minimum wage in Britain and most recently in uh, Germany, didn't find large job losses, if there were any losses at all. So I would say the evidence is pretty mixed. But I think the, the senator has a point that in the case of South Dakota, which is a low-wage state, uh -huh. uh, a $15 minimum is a pretty big increase from where they are now. And it might not be that you can learn uh, precisely what would happen in South Dakota from the historical experience. On the question of immigration, again, looking at the work that's been done and whether or not the, the, the value of immigration, the work you have been doing into all of these areas is fundamental to these core ways of life, aren't, isn't it? Well, it's a, I think it's a one part of an understanding of, first of all, how immigrants fit into the labor market. Secondly, whether... Um, their arrival has some un, um, unanticipated or um, possibly harmful effects on natives. And th those are always um, first order questions that people want to know about. What do you do now? I mean, where do you go having got this 
great honour and distinction and, and a, a, a chunk of change that comes with it. But that's, but that's, that's sort of the, that comes along the side. What do you do next? Oh, carry on. Um, I'm continuing to do projects, you know, similar kinds of projects in, in different areas. Um, pretty much the same as I was doing yesterday. The big, with that in mind, and bearing in mind we've coming out of a pandemic that seems to have caused seismic shifts in economics, in the way our workplace, in the way we interact in, in, in the work. What do you think are the big issues for economics as it relates to the workplace in the future? Uh, I think the pandemic has really brought forward the issue of um, uh, work from home. Uh, how many workers will be able to work from home? Um, will it be 80% or only 50%? Um, secondly, how will they be paid? Right now, uh, workers that work in high cost areas, for instance, if you work in San Francisco, you would typically get a premium over somebody that's uh, working in uh, Colorado. Um, if everyone's working from home, those premiums will have to all be uh, rearranged. It will be really interesting to see how that's going to work out. And that's exactly what is happening, isn't it? The Googles of this world, uh, the PwCs, those people who have agreed to let people move or work from home have said, oh, yeah, but you can't keep your extra way, you can't keep your extra pay for those ones, which of course makes sense and sort of seems unfair at one and the same time. Yeah, you can understand both sides, I think. Uh, it's a typical thing in economics. There's always uh, two sides to, uh, to an argument. And, and here it seems like, you know, Google is, was previously paying a, a, a reward to live in a high cost area. And if you're not doing that, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't uh, expect that to be in your pay. I can see that. Well, judging from where you are at the moment, you're certainly familiar with the high cost of living in certain parts of that northern California. Professor, congratulations once again and thank you. I much appreciate the important work that you've done on, on all these issues. Thank you, sir, for joining us.